A lot of customers are using SAP API management on the SAP Business Technology Platform to connect to your SAP system. A perfect fit for the Power Platform. Hello and welcome to this new playlist on SAP and Power Platform here on the SAP on Azure YouTube channel. Okay, our system is now behind a firewall. So we need to bridge the wall to access it from Power Automate. We already talked about the on-premises data gateway, but there's actually also the SAP Cloud Connector often being used with SAP customers. Actually, it is then often used in combination with an SAP API management. So let's take a look. So now let's talk about SAP API management. Um, so in, in this specific scenario, um, we typically have an SAP system and that SAP system behind a firewall. Then you have the SAP API management running on the business technology platform where you, where you have an API portal where basically the API admin manages the APIs and you have a developer portal where the consumers of the API um, can, can look at what APIs are available. So I already did all of this and now I can, I'm here with the API Business Hub Enterprise um, and now I'm, I'm the person who wants to consume these APIs. So as a starting point, I can see here our ES5 um, example um, where we have access to APIs from our um, GW Sample Basic service. And if I go there, I can see here the proxy URL. Um, I can also take a look at the API reference. So I can see there's business partners, sales order sets, product set, very much like what we've seen before. But now it's proxied, it's managed by an API management layer. So if I, for example, um, open up now here Visual Studio Code and I use the REST client, I have here the authentication credentials, obviously. And if I click on send request, then I can see that the call is somewhat successful, but I get a 401 unauthorized. And the reason for this is that um, the API is actually protected by an API key. I'll take a look at the um, configuration in a second, but this basically means I need an API key to access this um, API service. So, so what I can do is I can actually go to here my, my workspace and I can create a new application. So let's call it um, demo API call. I will add here this specific product. So this is all very um, SAP API management specific, but now we are creating basically a template that allows us to call this specific API. So I, you can see here, I have an API key. So let's take this one. Let's paste the API key in here. And now if I do the request, then voila, we see all the information. So we see the business partner set, the product set. So all the information that we had before. With this actually, we're good to go. We can actually switch over to Power Automate. And here in this Power Automate flow, I um, actually let me, let me delete this one here. Um, I can now add a new OData service. So uh, I'll go here to the SAP OData action. I'll start with the query operation. And now what we'll do is we'll create a new connection. So the um, baseline URL for our service is obviously this one here. So um, uh, the, the very same uh, URL that we also tested in our gateway client. Um, we provide a username and password and we need to enter the API key. So the API key has a header called API-key. And, and we'll again take a look at this in a second and this specific API key. So if I enter this and if I also add here the username and the password, then I can save or create this connection type. And now it's like before. And now I, I can just use this um, operation to connect to the specific o o data service. So very much like before, I can just select the product set. I can say, let's only return the top five um, products. I can save it and I can test this, um, this service. But now the huge difference is that I'm not connecting directly to the SAP system, but I'm really connecting via SAP API management. I am providing this API key, which then allows me to connect in an authenticated way um, to my backend system. So and how is this done? How can you do this? Well, it's very, very easy actually. Um, so basically I followed here these tutorials to get started with SAP API management, how to set up SAP API management in a trial, how to create a provider, proxy, a product and so on, and how to add a policy to do the API verification. There's some additional information here, some, some additional tutorials, which I'll all put in the 
um, in the show notes. There's also a documentation on the help.scp.com um, portal that goes into more details. But in the end, it's it's fairly simple. So so what I've done, if I go really to the um, uh, the management view, basically, what I can see here is I am um, created um, an API. So I called it um, GW Basic Sample. I fetched the information um, from our uh, endpoint resource, so, so our um, ES5 system, basically. I'm, I'm connecting here to the GW Basic Sample. And the main thing what I did is create this policy here. So in this policy, you can see there's a, there's a flow. If a request comes in, then we require a verification of an API key. Only if that is successful. So only here if there is an key provided in API-key, in the header variable API-key, then the request is forwarded to our backend system, so to our ES5 system. And with this and with the functionality the possibilities to really um, configure now also APIs keys in the um, SAPO data connector, we can easily now um, also use API management as an additional layer to protect your SAP system.